Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for more choices next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Baptiste from Overwatch, because medics aren't super common on the channel, but they should be in your party. My channel is like a Genji that doesn't have voice chat, won't stop jumping, and keeps fighting the enemy team by itself. What I'm saying is, we need healing. I need healing. I'm going to fight for a better world. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, lots of healing and distant healing to heal safely when there's an asthmatic Australian throwing horror movie hooks around. Next, we need to amplify the damage of our friends, which I think should be a basic ability swapped out with the immortality field because immortality is kind of busted. Speaking of, immortality, can you give it to your friends? Not really, but we can make an aura that makes them much harder to kill and we'll grab that. Since Overwatch characters only have like six abilities, we're gonna get several options for each of these with varying degrees of efficiency. For stats, we're gonna be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your wisdom and dexterity high. Wisdom will be number one, you're a medic first, and medicine is a wisdom ability. Dexterity next, if people don't need a bandage, they might need a bullet, and this is gonna help you deliver that. Strength after that, jumping is tied to your strength and you have the biggest jump in the game, with the exception of the girl who has a literal jetpack. Follow that up with intelligence, you use a lot of technology even though medicine is a wisdom score. I really feel like it should be intelligence, I realize that crystal healing is actually effective in D&D, it's just, uh, I don't like it. Charisma is a bit low, we'll get some proficiencies to help us out there and we'll dump constitution. Unfortunately, we just need everything else more for a more accurate Baptiste. At home, change this up, definitely dump one of the the other soft stats you're not really going to be using them baptiste is a human but the lokatha are fish people who aren't in as many stories or pieces of media as humans because most stories are about humans across almost every single fantasy sci-fi steampunk cyberpunk or solar punk thing there is a human equivalency that generally make up the main characters because they're easy for the audience to identify with if you draw issue with this write your own story about non-human protagonists in a world without humans and best of luck getting that to appeal to the masses i believe in you you're clearly smarter than everyone else anyway variant humans get a feat the resilient feat gives you proficiency with saving throws of one type and a plus one to the score. We'll go with constitution because we dumped it and that was a bad idea. Bump it further along with wisdom with your two free points, take perception for your skill of choice, and the soldier background for athletics and intimidation. You sign up for the military pretty young and this will get us the skills we need later. We'll kick things off as a cleric, which might seem weird. Baptiste doesn't seem particularly religious, but his name is Jean Baptiste Augustine, meaning he's named after two saints. Clearly his parents raised him to be devout, or they would have if, you know, Ooh, my bad. You get two skills from the cleric list. Medicine and persuasion would be fitting since your parents died in war before they could teach you their religion. Let war be your religion as a war cleric. War clerics get proficiency with martial weapons and heavy armor. I'd say you're wearing something in the medium category though. The martial weapon I'd recommend would be a heavy crossbow to deal 1d10 piercing damage with each shot. Though since you have to load it, you can't fire it multiple times in the same round and you won't be able to use the war priest ability, which lets you attack as a bonus action an amount of times per day equal to your wisdom to modifier. Don't worry, we'll fix it up later. For your first level spells, Healing Word heals a creature up to 30 feet away, 1d4 plus your wisdom modifier as a bonus action, which works great with a long range and the ability to shoot someone first. Shield of Faith gives a creature of your choice plus two to their AC for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Concentration saves are constitution saves and you have proficiency with those thanks to resilience, isn't that nice? That should keep your immortality field up a little bit longer. Bless gives up to three creatures a d4 to add to attack rolls and saving throws for up to a minute depending on your concentration. You can give it to more people once we get higher level slots, but let's not kid ourselves. Hanzo isn't coming near the point anytime soon. Just give it to yourself in the tanks. Since you're a war cleric, you can cast Divine Favor to add a d4 of radiant damage to your shots for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. It's the future. Everything's a little lasery. For your cantrips, Spare the Dying stops a creature from rolling death saves because respawning isn't a thing in D&D. At least it's not until we build Mercy. Resistance gives a creature a d4 they can add to a saving throw. Guidance does the same for ability checks. Baptiste is a nice guy. His encouragement would mean a lot. Second level clerics can channel divinity. All clerics can turn undead, forcing a wisdom saving throw on undead creatures in a 30 foot radius of you, making them run away for a minute if they fail. You can honestly scare a reaper away just by telling your team, I saw reaper, go get him. He's kind of a baby. War clerics can use guided strike, letting you add 10 to an attack roll if you really need to hit. For this level spell, cure wounds heals 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier to a creature you touch. If they come back to the payload, they're probably going to be easier to heal. That's just science. 
Third level clerics can learn second level spells. Magic weapon makes a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adds one to the attack and damage rolls for up to an hour depending on your concentration. You might be a doctor, but the Hippocratic Oath is more like guidelines than actual rules. Fourth level clerics get an ability score improvement bump that wisdom up for better healing. The aid spell will give you more to heal by bumping the HP of three creatures by five for eight hours without concentration, making everyone a little bit harder to kill. Not that that's going to be enough for your toxic teammates. Stop spamming. I need healing. I am doing my best. I am not going to run behind the enemy team with you, Echo. That's just going to get me killed. You know what? Why don't we just be the DPS we want to see in the world? How about that? Multiclassing into Ranger gives you a skill. Investigation may be up to you. Check the list for something you like. The class feature variants unearthed arcana revised ranger revised the ranger giving you favored foe letting you cast hunter's mark without a spell slot or concentration an amount of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier this adds a d6 to the damage of attacks you make against that creature for an hour and gives you advantage on checks to track the creature deft explorer lets you choose a couple of options candy gives you expertise and a skill from the ranger list medicines on the ranger list that would be my pick even if your team doesn't deserve a healer okay i'm gonna calm down just gonna i'm just gonna breathe Second level rangers get a fighting style. Archery adds two to your attack rolls with ranged attacks. You've been playing Baptiste for a while. Hopefully you're getting good at aiming. You can also learn ranger spells like jump, which triples the jump distance of a creature for a minute. This makes your vertical jump height 12 feet, which is pretty darn high. Honestly, we don't really have any spare ability score improvements, so that's as high as it's going to get. I tried making this as an artificer for boots of striding and springing, but then we can't get some of the higher level cleric spells we need. And let's be honest, jumping isn't the most important thing in D&D. Long strider increases the target's movement speed by 10 feet for more of a Lucio thing, but hey, it'd be nice to get back to the point quickly. Since you're multi-classing spellcasters, check out page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many spells you have at any given level. Third level rangers get primeval awareness, letting you detect if there are any aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fiends, fey, or undead within a mile of you for a minute per level of spell you spend. You don't know how many or where they are, it's honestly not great, but the revised versions of this aren't really in character. You don't need speak with animals to speak to Winston because you just need a cell phone and the conviction to leave Talon behind. I believe in you. Let's do some good today. You also get a ranger archetype. Monster Slayer is great for a ranger that doesn't really want to do a specific ranger thing. Hunter Sense lets you know if a creature within 60 feet of you has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities an amount of times per long rest equal to your wisdom modifier. That's Cyber Ninja, vulnerable to radiant damage, weirdly enough. Get your Russian friend to melt him. Slayer's Prey lets you pick a creature to deal an extra d6 of damage to with your first weapon attack per round, pretty much Hunter's Mark without the tracking bonus. So pairing your concentration free Hunter's Mark with this and Divine Faith Favor, your shot will deal 1d10 plus 2d6 plus 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier and damage. That's a lot of dice, and dice are pretty fun. Fourth level rangers get an ability score improvement or a feat. The crossbow expert feat lets you fire your crossbow at creatures in melee range without disadvantage. You can fire a hand crossbow as a bonus action, and the reloading penalty is no longer a thing, so you can fire a crossbow multiple times in the same round with your war priest ability and with something else we're getting next level. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action. Keep in mind, Slayer's Prey only activates on the first attack per round, but Divine Favor and Hunter's Mark work with everything. We're really here for the ultimate regenerative feat field rangers and druids are the only ones who can learn it and baptiste doesn't turn into a crocodile healing spirit summons a holy spirit to hang out in a five foot cube deals creatures that move into the area or start their turn there 1d6 hit points and can do this an amount of times equal to one plus your wisdom modifier or until you drop concentration on it casting it at higher levels bumps up that healing by 1d6 each time if you think the people look like they could use some healing and you know what they do. I was too hasty. You're not DPS. Winston's doing his best. Let's get back to healing him. Fifth level clerics get destroy undead, meaning your turn undead kills undead of challenge rating one half or lower. I'm guessing your DM's going to scale Reaper up with your level, so probably not going to work on him. Sorry. You can also learn third level cleric spells. Crusader's Mantle is pretty great from the war cleric list. It's basically an area of effect version of Divine Fury, giving 1d4 radiant damage to the weapon attacks from creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you. Light them up with light. Sixth level clerics can channel divinity twice per long rest, and war clerics get another option. War God's Blessing lets you give another creature plus 10 to an attack roll as a reaction. Just tell soldier to aim through the big glowing square. For this level spell, Aura of Vitality got added to the cleric list by that unearthed arcana with the long name that I use way too much. It creates a 30 foot radius around you where you can heal a creature 2d6 as a bonus action. A third level healing spirit would also heal 2d6, but this has a bigger area it can affect and doesn't run out after 
five uses, technically having up to 10 depending on your concentration. Think of Healing Spirit as a car wash that everyone can run through and you don't really need to worry about. But Aura of Vitality is you standing in the middle of five people all vying for your healing love. JK, they're all gonna bully you until you heal them. I hate playing healer, have I made that clear? Just let me be a thick tank that can't die. I just want to soak up damage. It's so much less stressful. Seventh level clerics can learn fourth level spells. Death Ward stops a creature from dying the first time it would in an eight hour period, dropping to one HP instead of zero for a solo immortality field. It doesn't require concentration though, so you could throw it on the whole squad once you get the slots for that. Eighth level war clerics get Divine Strike, letting you add a D8 of damage to one attack per round, meaning that when you have Divine Favor and Hunter's Mark, you can hit someone with three D10 plus one, D8 plus three, D4 plus four, D6 plus six damage, if you don't miss or mess around thinking about silly things like healing. You also get an ability score improvement here, cap your wisdom so you're not tempted to focus on silly things like dealing damage. For this level spell, Aura of Life got added to the cleric list by the class feature variance blah 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 because a creature you like in a 30 foot radius resistance to necrotic damage, their HP total cannot be reduced and if they start their turn with zero HP it gets bumped up to one for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. That health you can't lose because of the immortality field is very tiny but at least you're not respawning. Your Destroy Undead also works on challenge rating 1 or lower undead. Again, Reaper's probably a little bit bigger than that. Ninth level clerics can learn 5th level spells. Greater Restoration takes care of the part of medicine that isn't just meat points. You can get rid of a level of exhaustion, a charming effect, a petrification effect, a curse, a reduction to all ability scores, or a reduction to the hit point maximum. Talon's been busy since you left. Who knows what kind of nasty stuff they've got now. 10th level clerics get divine intervention, letting you slide into the DMs of a god or a goddess, which we never picked. Whoops. Tear seems fitting for a guy who's just as likely to shoot you as he is to heal you. Roll a d100. If you roll lower than your level, your god intervenes in a major way depending on the DM's discretion. If you succeed, you can't do it again for seven days. If you fail, you need to take a long rest so your god doesn't think you're needy for double texting. This is really the only out of character ability we're getting. Sorry about that. For this level's spell, Skill Empowerment got added in the CFVUA to the Cleric list. It gives a person expertise on a skill they're proficient with for an hour. You've already got medicine expertise, so maybe spread this to the team. 11th level clerics can learn 6th level spells, heal, automatically heals a creature 70 HP within a 60 foot range, and also removes blindness, deafness, or disease. Your healing grenades probably shouldn't be this strong, but I won't tell anyone if you don't. Your destroy undead also bumps up to challenge rating 2 or lower, I guess that's also not in character. I guess you can shoot reaper and you're better at range than he is? I'm really stretching for that, just heal and shoot stuff if you don't like it. 10th level clerics get our last ability score improvement, bump that dexterity for more accurate shots. It's best if you don't have to use your channel divinity just to land a hit. For this level spell, Find the Path shows you the most direct route to a location for a full day, depending on your concentration. It's not always the safest path though. Drow Sniper might try and clip you if you're just napping on the payload. 13th level clerics can learn 7th level spells. Regenerate heals 4d8 plus 15 to a creature, then another 1 HP per round for the next hour. It fixes up any removed limbs in 2 minutes as well. So many people in Overwatch got robot arms, why don't they just wait for your regeneration? I know McCree has an appointment at noon, but nobody else has anything pressing on their schedule. 14th level clerics get another d8 of damage from divine strike and can destroy undead of cr3 or lower. You can also learn more spells but honestly you got a huge kit of spells already and I'm not totally sure other ones are in character. We could have actually grabbed way more spells. All those domain spells we got are free as well as the other domain spells I didn't mention and more spells every time we bumped our wisdom modifier. Obviously things like mass healing word and mask your wounds would be useful. Scoop those up for sure at home. They're just not really auras. They're more like big ground grenades of healing. Comment and be mad though. The algorithm's into it and I'm into the algorithm. It's all gravy. Our capstone is the 15th level of cleric for an 8th level spell. Holy Aura gives friendly creatures in a 30 foot radius of you advantage on all their saving throws. Creatures attacking them have disadvantage and when a fiend or undead attacks a creature inside they have to make a constitution saving throw or they're blinded until the spell ends. Last for a minute depending on your concentration. This is my personal favorite for the immortality field even if it's actually a little better in my opinion. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, healing. Clerics are good at healing, and you have spell slots of a 17th level caster, meaning that your team is going to be hard to take down. You're also helping your team put out damage with Crusader's Mantle or Magic Weapon if you really want to just pocket one person. Finally, you're pretty great at dealing damage with 2d8 plus 3d10 plus 3d4 plus 4d6 plus 9 damage in a round with all your wacky ways to add damage to your shots. 
For weaknesses, you're low on HP with barely over 100, meaning that you're going to get taken down pretty quickly. You're also loaded with concentration spells, even though your saves are plus 6, you can still only have one spell up at a time. Finally, we can't learn 9th level spells because we wanted a 2nd level ranger spell. 9th level cleric spells are better than 2nd level ranger spells, even if healing spirit is a pretty good 2nd level spell. But just stay in the back, heal when you can, shoot when you don't need to. That's how you play Baptiste in Overwatch, that's how you play him in D&D. Just hope that your days of talent don't come back to haunt you. Lord knows you reaper what you sow. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We have more bonus videos coming out next week, so come back on Saturday for that, or come back Tuesday and Thursday for our regular videos.